Today we're going to be looking at how the Retroid Pocket 4 handles GameCube emulation. Starting off we're looking at Animal Crossing and for every single game we'll show the GPU renderer that we use and the resolution we're running at and the performance mode that we have the Retroid Pocket 4 in. And as you can see, Animal Crossing is performing with no issues using the standard performance mode at 1x resolution using the OpenGL renderer. For pretty much all the games, I'll be using OpenGL, but whenever we move over to Vulkan, I'll let you know. But as you can see, Animal Crossing here is running with no issues whatsoever. We don't have to mess around with any settings or even put the system into high performance mode. Next up we're looking at F0GX and at 1x resolution using standard performance mode we are struggling a bit. So to try and boost things a little bit we can put the performance mode up to high. But even then, F0GX isn't running as smoothly as we want, and that is noticeable from the sound as well. Switching over to the Vulkan GPU renderer it does improve things slightly, but we still need to do more. If we finally jump down to 0.7x resolution, then we can get F0X running as smoothly as we want. Next up is Luigi's Mansion and with 1x resolution at standard mode, it appears to be running pretty smoothly, but I do feel like we could get better visual representation from some of the effects. Things like the lighting or the vacuum effects. So to get that, we can jump over to Vulkan GPU. Mario Kart Double Dash and this is running on the Retro Pocket 4, no issues whatsoever at 1x resolution. Mario Party 6 is a similar situation, 1x resolution, standard performance mode, and it runs no problems whatsoever.
Metroid Prime seems to be running with no issues on standard mode at 0.7x resolution, so I feel like we could bump this one up to 1x and see if it could still run smoothly. And I'm happy to say that it does. Now you'll see with some of the games I do start them off at 0.7x resolution because some of these games I felt might have struggled, but anywhere that we can see that we can go up to 1x resolution, we will do that and see if the system can handle it. Conversely, if the system is struggling at 1x resolution, we'll drop it down to 0.7. Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, and although the Retro Pocket 4 runs this speed-wise pretty well, we are seeing the issues, the graphical issues that we see with OpenGL and Vulcan making this game not really playable. NBA Street Volume 2 struggles at 0.7x resolution on standard performance mode, so to try and get more out of this, we need to put the performance mode into high. When we do move over to high performance mode, things are running a lot more smoothly. As a matter of fact, exactly how you would want. So now I feel we can maybe push this up to 1x resolution and see how good it runs. And I'm happy to say that it runs brilliantly as well. 1x resolution and high mode is what you need for NBA Street Volume 2. Ah, I love the great open spaces. Need for Speed Underground 0.7x resolution standard mode and it is struggling a bit. To get more out of this game we're going to have to push the system up to high performance mode. And once we do, we definitely get smoother performance, but not exactly what we want, not as fast as we want. So I think this is really the limit for this game in the Retro Pocket 4. There's absolutely no point in pushing this to 1x resolution because it will just struggle even more. Need for Speed Underground 2, 0.7x resolution in standard mode, and this is also struggling, similar to Need for Speed Underground 1. If we push this up to mid performance mode, and you will ask why did I push it up to mid and not high like all the other games? Honest answer, I forgot to press the button twice. But if we push it up to mid performance mode, we definitely get better performance. And I think it's pretty safe to say that if we push it up to high performance mode, we could get a good solid play experience from Need for Speed Underground 2. Paper Mario and absolutely no issues running this game at 1x resolution using standard performance mode.
Pokemon Colosseum, and unfortunately things aren't great. Resolution 0.7x in standard performance mode. Things are a bit stuttery and slow when we get into battle scenes, but what's even worse is we still see those persistent graphical issues that we've seen in the past, where large areas of the floor just seem to turn into darkness or disappear entirely. High performance mode does give us a bit more speed, but it still doesn't fix those graphical issues. And the same can be said for Pokemon XD as well, running this at 0.7 resolution on high performance mode and we still have those visual issues. Something else to say is that also for Colosseum and XD, they both suffer from that issue where when you push down on the analog stick, if you go to 100% down, the character moves up. You've got to just push it down like 70% to actually make the character move down, which is really frustrating. Resident Evil with 1x resolution on standard mode and the Retro Pocket 4 handles this with no issues. Shadow the Hedgehog running at 0.7x resolution on standard mode, we have no issues. So we can feel safe enough to move this up to 1x resolution and still it's a great smooth playable experience. Sonic Heroes, once again, 0.7x resolution on standard mode is not a problem, so moving this up to 1x resolution is also smooth and awesome gameplay. Mario Strikers 0.7x resolution on standard mode. There is a little bit of stuttering and with a game like this, a fast paced sports game, we need to get that smoother. So to do that, we can move up to performance high mode.
Super Mario Sunshine has no issues running with 0.7x resolution in standard mode, so to get an even crisper, more authentic representation of this game, we can go to 1x resolution with no issues. Super Smash Bros. Melee is the same, 0.7x resolution in standard mode, has no issues. So if we want to get that crisper, more authentic gaming experience, we can move up to 1x resolution and still enjoy a smooth gameplay experience. Running Zelda Wind Waker at 0.7x resolution in standard mode is, for the most part, great, but we could get things a little bit smoother so we can pump things up to performance high mode. With the performance on high mode, things are looking a lot more smoother. So now I feel like we can pump things up to 1x resolution and get a really crisp, smooth gameplay experience out of this. Simpsons Hit and Run on 0.7x resolution in standard mode does struggle a little bit. We do see the frame rate drop on occasion, so we're going to need to pump this up to high performance mode to get the most out of it. And once again, as seems to be a common pattern here, is when we are in high performance mode, we can push up to 1x resolution and get a really crisp gameplay experience out of this. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 and at 0.7x resolution in standard mode we have no issues so we can push this up to 1x resolution and get a crisper gameplay experience.
Extreme G3 at 0.7x resolution in standard mode seems to be running with no issues, so we can bump this up to 1x resolution and see how fast we can get it. One X resolution is running pretty well, but I think to get the mouse out of this, we should put the Retro Pocket 4 into high performance mode. As you can see on the Retro Pocket 4, GameCube emulation is a bit of an even split between games that can run smoothly on standard performance mode and those games that need to be on high performance mode with a bit more of a boost. The Retro Pocket 4 is a massively capable system when it comes to GameCube emulation. If you want to get a full idea of how awesome the Retro Pocket 4 is as a retro game and handheld machine, then check out the review right here.